As an art director, I've reviewed hundreds of game art portfolios. And let me tell you that face retopology is somewhere where everyone fails. And honestly, hobbyist YouTube videos on retopology are definitely not helping. Over the past six years, I've taught thousands of game art students at university the correct way to retopologize characters. We're sharing my ultimate strategy to nail face retopology every single time. Plus, to help you, I've put together three retopology PDFs. A cheat sheet, tips, tricks, hacks, common problems, 50 pages of retopology goodness that you can download straight away and help you on your journey. So let's dive in. So in the previous video, we went over how to draw all these body wires. And as standard, what I do is I usually split up poly paint into UV islands and also areas of high concentration for topology. It's usually in the areas of animation. But for this video, we'll be doing the head and the face. I highly suggest to play along with the video and draw the lines. But first to draw on the face, we want to make sure that poly paint is on with this little paintbrush. In the tool sections, come to layers and then click this button, which adds a new layer. You can rename it. I rename it wireframe guide. First, I suggest coming up to color, selecting white and then pressing fill object. Press B to bring up the brushes and then press P. And what displayed here is a paintbrush. So no sculpted information, just pure poly paint. So with this, you have symmetry activated. We'll change the color to black so it stands out really well. And now you can start to draw on concept wireframes. That's what we're going to be doing for the entire video. To be honest, I like to use the mouse just because it's a little bit more stable. If you want to stabilize this brush a little bit more, you can come up to the strokes menu and under strokes, there's going to be lazy mouse. So if you activate that and turn up the lazy radius, it's going to smooth out our brush and you'll see it drags along this sort of elastic band. So it's as simple as that. And then we export the map and start to do retopology on it. So with the face, I usually start to uh, look at the silhouettes. Obviously, we've got the open mouth here. The first one will be the border of the lip. So that's connecting the lip away from the other parts of the mouth. Now that needs to be one continuous edge loop that goes all the way around. So if we concept it here, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be comprised of many edges that are radi radiating out. That means it's going to work well for deformation. So say, for example, this is an opening mouth, closing mouth, or an infinitely puckered one where it goes into the center. All this uh, geometry is going to work very well. Um, I'm not going to draw them all intricately here. I'm just going to start with all the silhouettes. So another ring loop is for the inside of the nostril. That's going to be important for the silhouettes of the nostril. If you're looking at it from the side, the front, that's going to be very important. Maybe if they're flaring and they're animated, if it's got to that stage with games. Obviously, another important section is going to be the inside of the eye. And you want this to be quite accurate. We're going to put loads and loads of geometry here um, because the eyes are obviously going to close and open. We need some supporting geometry to do that kind of animation. Um, at the same time, while we're around the eye, usually I just like to circle roughly where the bone, the underlying eye socket is going to be. Now you'll have to adjust this because it uses so many axes. So say, for example, from the side, we're just making sure that it's uh, contouring to the edge. Again, it depends on how big the person's cheekbones are or how deep set their eyes are. So really important to concept this out first because everyone's going to be unique when it comes to that. And what this inadvertently makes is again, the same kind of loop system where we can go around because similar to the mouth, it's going to open and close and deform. People are going to be squinting, opening their eyes um, and also have different sizes of eyes if you wanted to use this on a different sort of character mesh. Also want to separate the ear away from the head. Now, this kind of loop is more important when it comes to unwrapping. So if we've got one continuous loop here, it means that we can separate the ear away from the head and then just completely have that separate as a UV island and work on it on it separately. So we're splitting those off to the side. At this stage, um, it's probably worth squaring off the head. So usually, again, for the front silhouette, looking at from, from exactly the front, I like to have one that comes up from the ear hole we made and it just goes completely 90 degrees upwards. That's going to create the front silhouette, but it's also going to give a very good foundation structure um, for the shape of head we're going to do here. So I roughly aim for the, for the next apex here, which is another 90 degree angle, and I'm just going to draw it from the side all the way across to there. So you can see how it's keeping structure within our geometry. So obviously the head isn't a perfect sphere. It turns into a neck somewhat down here. So from the near, from the ear, I just basically like to draw this down and connect it back into the neck. That just means we've got some consistent geometry 
uh, and it slowly starts to bend back into the arm. So this is nice, smooth edge flow. Another very important silhouette is going to be the jawline. So taking it from the tip of the jaw and then just bringing it all the way and leading it back into that ear hole that we created. Now, wherever these new shapes are adjusted, you can imagine we're just going to fill this in with normal topology. So it makes it very, very simple and easy. There are a couple of more loops to be had when it comes to facial animation. So it's important for games animation and also when it comes to the CG, very similar because we're using quads mostly, although you can use triangles in the face. However, if you do use triangles, they're not going to deform as well. Um, so we usually try to avoid it. Um, but hopefully if you're following along with this process, we're not going to have any tries around this area. It's actually going to be mostly comprised of quads. So next important loop um, follows the muscle contours basically from this area. Here we've got a massive muscle that connects to the mouth. If you imagine you're sort of sn sniggering or, or sneering at someone, um, all this muscle is going to compress. And also when you're closing your mouth, this is going to come downwards and it's all going to compress together. So it's important to have an edge that allows for that deformation and also keeps that muscle structure when we insert it. So ideally it starts here and follows this fold and then you're going to conclude it into the center and that's going to create the top of the nose bridge. So that's a very useful um, animation loop as well. Now it's going to come very close to the corner of the mouth. We do have a lot of edge compression around here, which happens naturally. So it's going to come close to the mouth. We can always adjust this afterwards and then it's going to lead just in between the chin and the mouth. And what that means is that we can continue to make loads of geometry here and then keep that grid section. Now, usually what I like to do is take preference on mouth loops. So what we'll do is actually rub out a section of this. I'm just going to open this up. Now, this is just from the years of experience that I'll be enlisting onto you. Um, but basically with this continuous loop, this edge loop, very similar to how we did with the shoulder joint, I'm just going to take it quite broadly on the outside um, and leave a lot of space to be had. And that just means that if uh, we run into deformation issues when it comes to animation, we can always just insert edge loops with the multi-cut in this area and basically relax it. And so because we've made this so big, maybe it can come in a little bit closer, but it means that we have to lean this uh, edge a little bit wider and then come back in. So when it comes to the face, uh, people get a little bit confused because it won't always perfectly contour to the surface structure or the surface shape, especially when it comes to the face, um, we're really focused on animation and deformation. Uh, but also at the same time, like we did with this shoulder section, um, we can put an additional loop afterwards to define the chin off. But by far the most important thing is getting this ma these major loops in for the animation. And the rest is just a puzzle that we fill in afterwards. So another loop that's gonna be very important is what I call the, the raccoon mask or the burglar's mask. And that's just going to cover around the top of the eyes and encapsulate the circle that we made. It's gonna wrap around all the way to around the cheekbones. And then it's gonna finish and finalize in between these two lines that we created. And now that's really useful uh, for a lot of the eyes movement comes away from the eye. So there's loads of muscles on the forehead that are lifting the eyebrows up. It's gonna be loads of cheek muscles that need to rest and conform here. So this major loop is gonna help with that kind of deformation and animation. So at this stage, we've got um, a pretty good coverage. The final loop, just to round it all off, is gonna be separating the face from the rest of the body. And that's gonna be useful when, for example, you need to extract the face and unwrap it in a particular way. So usually I just like to bring it all the way down to here. Um, maybe take it a little bit higher. Uh, it depends if the, the team that you're going with, if they have sort of a normal map deformation for squinting, um, if that is the case, and there's sort of like advanced tech, usually we take it a little bit higher. So. These things are, are something that you discuss with the, the art lead, but as a safe bet, if you want a, something that covers the whole thing, just take it a little bit higher, just so wherever there's wrinkles that are gonna happen, you've got a nice unwrap to support all that structure. Now this kind of connection, it may change later. It purely depends on how the front of the face goes. So this I usually leave towards the end and that's gonna connect in a, a, ver a variety of ways we'll work that out afterwards. Um, the next most important bit is now that we've got the loops is the direction of the counter angles to those loops. And I see this error so many times, even on um, professional portfolios. I uh, can't believe that people do it. Students obviously do it this, the same way. 
And it's, for example, if, you're, if you've got an edge loop that's coming up here, that's obviously going to make very nice squared topology. But sometimes people make the error and for some reason they bring the edge off to the side or they kind of go this way. And it's usually because they haven't broken down the mesh and approached it in the way that we have. So we don't have to, we don't have make those errors because we've basically um, drawn out all the topology first. So as a general rule of thumb, if you're looking at the center, say for the eyes or the mouth, you want to get your edges and radiate outwards, sort of like the sun. So for example, I just usually start with the 90 degree ones. And this guy is probably going to start looking a bit like um, a clown, which is fun. And do the bottom of the eye down here. Now it might slightly deviate off to the side, but a very good way to terminate this bottom eye loop is to bring it all the way down, all the way here and in between the top of the lip. So roughly about halfway. Um, and that's just nicely squaring off all this geometry and making sure that we've got good structure. So this one's actually quite a key line that's going to help us down the line when it comes to making the rest of the topology. So with the inside of the eye, just going to connect those again, making everything nice and square. You might start to discover that um, a couple of these are turning into five sided pieces of geometry or the, um, the islands that we've created. These will turn into poles later and we'll, we'll explore what those are. Side of the eye, I just bring that all the way off to the side. And now we've got this sort of crisscross structure. It's just about filling it in uh, evenly. So taking the 50% line and just drawing another line in the opposite direction. And if we continue with this pattern, it basically means that all our facial topology is going to be nicely, evenly distributed, which is one of the fundamentals of retopology is having nice square geometry also at the same time nice even geometry so that can change um, in areas of high resolution so say for example the eye we usually have a lot of geometry lots of loads of small little squares and then towards other areas say for example the back of the head we have nice big squares um, but as a general rule of thumb you want to keep them nice and square just going to use the same kind of theory uh, for the mouth so i'm just going to lead it off here now i won't continue the edge loop all the way um, because usually this this area is uh, customized a little bit. So we're following the same sort of contour. And as you'll see, the loop that we connected to the eye to the mouth has also linked up to the nice methodology that we did here, which is 50% between the top and the side. So overall, right now, really strong piece of topology um, ready for deformation. You might want to put in the nose edge as well, which is just another physical separation of geometry. Okay, so next we're gonna put in a couple of important ear silhouettes. Obviously, when you're looking at the ear from different angles, there are so many different shapes there. So one of the major shapes, of course, is on the outside, and we're gonna draw across all these helixes and basically draw these silhouettes, and that's gonna form inside. There's no real um, animation or deformation that's needed with the ear. We just need silhouette loops. So it's actually one of the easier things to retopologize and this area, we can actually just make it and construct it all out of tries. It doesn't matter. And what does matter is that we've got these major shapes. So often the ear will fan out in this direction, make sort of a triangle. So basically from the front, we want a nice edge that's going to be leading across here. And that's going to give us a really nice uh, ear topology when it comes to looking at it from the front. Um, so usually people don't focus too much on the ear, but it is what sometimes makes a character. So having good ear topology and good silhouettes uh, can really make the difference. It's up to you if you want to go on the inside and do the cavities and stuff, but um, it can be assumed that we'll be able to see that in Maya when it comes to ambient occlusion and shading and stuff like that. But we'll put it in just so it's nice and easy. So now you've got the perfect head retopology guidance system. We're ready to take that inside of Maya and then start drawing retopology on top of it. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to set that all up. There's plenty of videos out there on how to do head retopology. But if you're feeling a little bit unconfident or would like a step by step process going through the entire retopology process, I've created a member series that does just that. So check it out if you're interested. There's also tons and tons of advanced videos on other parts of retopology. They're not going to find on public YouTube. But if you're not ready for that just yet, definitely check out this next video on setting things up and maybe attempt some head retopology yourself. So thanks for watching and I will catch you on one of those videos.